As a solo game dev, world building can be one of the most time consuming activities. Imagine I'm trying to create a forest here. Dragging out every single tree or stone takes forever. And going from this to this can take hours. And even worse is the actual creation of the world itself, meaning the ground, water, hills and so on. Because in 2D games, the environment is usually made up of something called tile maps which is a very simple grid that I can drag and drop different tiles onto like puzzle pieces to create my world. But again, this process takes forever. So today we're gonna try to make world building go from being something that takes hours into hopefully just a couple of minutes. And if this works, it could literally save us months of development time later on. But first, we need a plan. To speed up this process, we basically need to create two different tools. One for building the environment and one for populating it with trees, stones and plants. In theory, it's quite simple what we want the tools to do. With the first one, I would like a tool that works a bit like paint. I would like to select a brush, for example a random grass brush, and then select an area and have the tool automatically make the ground, surround it with water, add some variation between light and dark grass, make some dirt patches and add some general decorations here. And then I would also like a small hill or big hill brush right here that lets me draw in the area again and then have the tool automatically make the hills and create grass on top of it. And with the second tool I would like to be able to just select the area and have the tool randomly place trees and stones and plants and stuff. So naive as I was I started working on on this seemingly simple tool, completely unaware that this was about to blow up to about 10,000 lines of spaghetti code. All because of tile maps. Don't get me wrong, tile maps are amazing, but at the same time, they are the worst piece of garbage technology I've ever worked with. Let me explain. So, tile maps are in theory extremely simple. You can look at a tile map as the same as a layer in a drawing program. So, if I create two layers here, that seems simply means that one will be rendered on top of the other, and it's the same with tile maps. Instead of drawing freely like I'm doing here, with a tile map you place out tiles that can be whatever images you want. So if you draw some images here that seamlessly fit together and convert each of these squares into a tile, you can start drawing these tiles to make new and interesting environments in your game. But the problem with tile maps is when you want elevation in the game or hills. In a 2D game like mine, there is no such thing as elevation. Making elevation meaning making the game 3D, you have to fake everything. And the best you can do is create the illusion of depth. So let's jump back into our drawing program again and imagine each layer here is a tile map. So you have the ground here, a player and now I'll make some hills right here that we want in the game. And the player should be able to walk on top of this hill and also behind or under it. Okay, so why is this so difficult? Can't you just move the player layer up whenever you want it to be on top of the hill like this. Yes you can, but what happens when the player is actually on the bottom floor but behind the hills? Well that's easy, you can just move the player behind the hills whenever they are actually standing on the bottom ground. Okay, but what then happens if the player is standing in front of the hills? Now the hills needs to be behind you again. And what about when you're standing at the side of the hill? Then the hills should be in front of you again. So how the hell do we even deal with corners like this, where one side has to be in front of you and the other side has to be behind you. Well, the only way to make this work is actually to start splitting up the hills into different layers. For example, if we make the hill walls here a separate layer that is always behind the player and make the top of the hills here another layer that is always in front of the player, this might work. And long story short, to make hills support different things like being able to walk up to the new elevation, making sure you can stand on the edge here, but also 
also go behind the hills when you are on the ground and be able to make ground markers after attacks or explosions that just show on the top of the hill but not the bottom and be able to have its own layer of grass on top and much much more we need a total of seven different tile maps each with a very specific job for example one tile map is for displaying the hills that's always supposed to be behind the player and we have another tile map that's for the colliders that should only be active when the player is below the hills but not on top of it and then we have another couple of tile maps that's for the grass on top of the hills okay so now we know what tile maps our tool must create and how it should be populating all of these but before we can start generating anything our tool needs to know where things should be so the first thing I made here in the tool is a way to draw in the area where I would like some grass, for example, and have the tool store all of this information. I'm using something called gizmos here to just display whatever I just drew. So in my tool, these buttons are kind of the different pencils that I can choose between. So I have some buttons here for normal grass, dirt, and so on. And I can even add a random grass pencil right here. And by using something called Perlin noise, I'm also able to automatically create these different patches of light grass, dark grass and dirt. Perlin noise simply generates some random noise like this with different light and dark areas. And then I can say that if a specific area is dark enough, I want that part to be a patch of dirt. And I also added a slider here that basically decides how big the patches should be. So here you can just see how it's making the different patches based on the Perlin noise. And next we also want to automatically add water around all the grass that I'm drawing. But due to the way I'm drawing my water tiles that I want to generate later, you can see that these tiles are actually four times larger than a normal ground tile. So we need the tool to round down the number of ground tiles it draws so we can perfectly fit a complete water tile at the edges like this. And now that our tool lets us draw and erase grass areas, automatically creates water around it and lets us save and load this information, it's time to actually start generating things. So this means we have to start drawing up a whole lot of different tiles. So making tiles for games can be extremely time consuming. When drawing tiles, you usually have to draw a unique tile for every combination of neighbors the tile might have. So if a patch of grass has no neighbors, it should look like this. If it has one above, it should look like this and so on. And since a tile has eight neighboring tiles, this means you need to draw a total of 256 unique tiles to handle every combination. But there is this really great trick that can actually reduce the number of tiles you have to draw from 256 down to only 16 tiles. And that's by using something called the dual grid system. Instead of having a single grid here and have all these tiles around decide what tile should be in the middle, we instead introduce a new grid on top of this and offset that new grid by a half. The first grid is now only used to tell us where the grass should be, but it shouldn't display display anything. And now on the second grid we only have to look at the four tiles around here to know what tile should be placed at this position. So by looking at these four we see that the bottom left corner needs grass. So the tile we place here is this one. And these four needs grass on the top left and so on. And since looking at eight neighboring tiles means 256 different combinations, then just looking at four neighbors means there can only be 16 possible combinations. So this means that by just drawing these 16 different tiles in our tile set right here, we can now handle every combination of tiles in the world, saving us a ton of time. So after I made some of these tile sets for light grass, dark grass and dirt, I could now generate the entire ground using the dual grid system. And when it comes to the water, I'm also using the same grid system, just with bigger tiles to generate all the water around the grass. 
but right now all of these grass patches were looking quite square and repetitive. So after spending some time creating multiple variations of all of these tile sets, I could now generate something that looks much more interesting and natural. Now I'm still not completely happy with the way the light and dark patches look and I'm not sure if it's the colors that are off or something, but if you have any ideas on how to make them look better, please let me know in the comments. But now it was time to add some minor decorations that go on top of the different areas here as well. So some decorations for grass, some for dirt and dark and light grass. And by adjusting the slider that I added in the tool right here, I can now decide how much of these decorations I want in the world. So with this, normal grass is now starting to look quite okay. And we can now start working on the hills. And I actually have two different hills that I want in this world. One small hill like this and one big hill like this. So let's start with the small hills. Again in the tool I first have to draw the different areas where I actually want some hills. So I added a couple of new pencils here in the tool for adding and erasing hills. And with this I could now have it generate everything. And it was quite important to make these hills also upgrade the ground underneath, since the tiles I've drawn here requires normal grass at the bottom. So if there's dirt or something underneath the hills, I needed to convert that into normal grass again. Now I might change the hill sprites later, so it can actually handle any kind of grass or dirt underneath, but I'm not quite sure what looks best yet. Now I did try to expand the normal dual grid system with some more fancy diagonal hill sprites right here, which made setting up some of the rules for when it should use the different tiles a bit more complicated. But after a lot of trial and error, things were starting to look quite good. And now finally we had to do the same thing for the big hills and have it generate all the seven tile maps with the different parts of the hills, all the different colliders and the different entrance ramps to the hills and so on. And after tons of coding to make all of these tiles get placed correctly and generate everything needed, we finally have our hills. But I'll show you one of the secrets to the illusion of 3D here. If I add a hill right here with a ramp like this, and if I now walk up this ramp, this feels a bit off. This is because in 2D games, there isn't really any real elevation happening here. It's all an illusion. And walking straight like this might get us up to a higher elevation in the game, but it looks wrong. So what we need to do is create a hidden object on the ramp right here with information of the angle of the slope. Now whenever the player enters this object it receives the information about the slope they're standing on and now for every move they make in the x direction I automatically add the corresponding y value based on the angle. So if you walk to the right on this slope for every one distance you move in the x direction I automatically add about 0.6 in the y direction. And this makes it look much more natural running up and down different different slopes. Anyways, now we finally have a tool that lets me draw in the environment I want and have it automatically generate everything. But now comes one of the most difficult parts of world generation. We now need to look at the entire map generated and store some very specific information of every single cell in this grid. And this is information like where the NPCs are allowed to walk for the pathfinding algorithm, where trees and stones can be placed, where the player is allowed to place buildings or workstations, what elevation the specific position has and so on. This is all information that we need quick access to both while the game is running and while generating the rest of the environment. For example, the pathfinding algorithm has to constantly query what tiles the NPCs are allowed to walk on and not. So after a couple of days of work, the tool is now able to generate all the different information we need right here, which I can also show using these different checkboxes. 
For example, here you can see all the non-walkable areas, and here you can see all the elevation areas and unreachable areas and so on. Finally, with all this information, we can start to generate the actual trees and stones here as well. So after drawing some trees, stones and plants, I made a new tool that based on where it's allowed to place them, it again uses Perlin noise to spawn them in. And with this tool, I can also regenerate specific areas if I'm not happy with how it looks. With all the work we put into the first tool, this tool can quite easily figure out where things can be placed, what elevation it should have and so on, making it super quick to add an entire forest right here. So with these two tools, there are still a lot of things to add when it comes to different biomes. But right now, going from a completely empty map to a full world with hills, rivers, trees and more, only takes a couple of minutes to make. Hopefully this will save us a lot of time going forward and hopefully it isn't too difficult to expand on it. But let me know if you have any other ideas on what I should add to make this look even better or more interesting. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.